Welcome, good morning ladies and gentlemen. We are here in Barcelona at the second day of the ESOC conference and uh, yesterday Professor Julian Bösel from Heidelberg presented the Siesta trial. Uh, welcome Professor Bösel. What is the Siesta trial about? The, the meaning of this trial acronym is sedation versus intubation in endovascular stroke treatment. And the SIESTA trial looks prospectively at uh, the question whether patients should be put uh, into a general anesthesia after intubation or rather left unintubated and only slightly sedated. So two states that we call general anesthesia on the one side and conscious sedation on the other side. And what are the results? Well, we uh, saw that uh, we have a pretty typical um, uh, endovascular stroke treatment population with a typical age and uh, NIH uh, SS median of uh, 17 and a lot of other features that are quite typical. Um, and our primary endpoint was uh, early neurological improvement. So NIH change from baseline to 24 hours. And in this primary endpoint, we did not see a difference. Did you expect no difference? To be honest, um, in the beginning, we expected a superiority of the conscious sedation uh, state because that was suggested in a lot of retrospective studies before. Um, but uh, we didn't see it. It was actually almost identical. And what is the difference between uh, your study and the uh, published retrospective findings? Well, first of all, of course, they are all retrospective. And uh, then in these studies, the baseline factors are unbalanced. There's probably also some selection bias in the sense that the sicker the patients are, the more likely they are to be intubated, and then they have a worse outcome. And although it was tried to statistically um, correct for this, um, it probably still played a role in these trials. And the other potential big difference is that we had a very strict protocol for both groups, uh, including physiology target parameters for blood pressure or for carbon uh, dioxide, uh, oxygen saturation. And I suspect that uh, something like that was not present in most of the trials, or at least it wasn't reported. And what is so important about blood pressure when you perform conscious sedation or general anesthesia in stroke patients? Well, the, in the situation where the large vessel is blocked and you have a penumbra, um, blood pressure uh, reductions decreases, but also variability appears to be very relevant. That's what we know from other studies. So uh, it's important to keep the blood pressure stable. Um, and that can be quite a challenge, particularly in general anesthesia. And you also mentioned uh, in your protocol you were controlling carbon dioxide. That's right. Um, it was shown in small studies that quite often patients that are put into general anesthesia for endovascular stroke treatment are inadvertently hyperventilated. So that leads to hypocarbia and that can lead to cerebral vasoconstriction, uh, which theoretically uh, cannot be good for the penumbra either. But that is more pathophysiological thinking that has not been robustly shown. Did you also control or measure, assess oxygenation? Yes, we did a, a neuromonitoring <coughs> by near-infrared spectroscopy and um, uh, then we also did BIS monitoring to assess the sedation level. So we did have quite an elaborate setup for systemic and for cerebral monitoring, but these data are still in the process of being analyzed. And have the anesthesiologists had a special education in neuroanesthesiology, or were these just general anesthesiologists who performed your study? Actually, there were no anesthesiologists at all. So uh, in Heidelberg, uh, the peri-interventional management is done by neurointensivists, so neurologists from our neurocritical care units. So uh, in Siesta and also in our everyday treatment at Heidelberg, anesthesiologists are not involved.
So, but uh, special persons, neurointensivists. So, do you think it needs uh, special skills to perform anesthesia in stroke patients, or can it be done by, uh, in most hospitals, it is done by anesthesiologists? Can it be done by a general anesthesiologist, or does it need a special education in neuroanesthesiology? I think that um, anesthesiologists who do this um, need a good understanding of cerebral hemodynamics and uh, of, the, of the pathophysiology of stroke as well um, to do it properly. Mm -hmm. And there are many out there, no doubt, and it can be done by anesthesiologists, but uh, as, you, as you suggest, I would agree that uh, they should have a special interest, focus and um, expertise in neuroanesthesia. Mm -hmm. Uh, is conscious sedation a little bit faster to achieve than general anesthesia? Yes, uh, we saw that um, we could start, the, the intervention could be started earlier in the conscious sedation group and in the Siesta trial it was uh, 10 minutes actually, 10 minutes earlier start. So I assume you're going whenever possible to, general, uh, to conscious sedation instead of general anesthesia with your patients. Is there a patient group that still needs general anesthesia? Definitely. I mean, we had uh, exclusion criteria for siesta for those that we thought uh, cannot be randomized for this, but needed definitely. And, and, and these criteria were uh, severe agitation. I mean, agitation that is so strong that uh, not even a groin puncture would be possible. Uh, coma and vomiting. And um, all signs of loss of protective reflexes or uh, respiratory compromise um, should, of course, lead to uh, intubation and general anesthesia. Okay, thank you very much, Professor Bösel. I think with your study, you have made a, a clear point how to manage, uh, from an anesthesiological point of view, the patients who will undergo endovascular treatment. And uh, you changed the practice of medicine with your trial. Thank you very much and I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm.